Hey everyone, this is my uh, review of the Rossi R92. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pick my camera stand up so you can get this whole thing into the view. This is the 20 inch model. And uh, before I continue, I'm going to go ahead and show you clear and safe. Okay, around in the chamber. I'll show you one more time. No round in the chamber. All right. So um, some things I kind of want to go over with on this firearm is that it, um, you know, it's an excellent firearm. Um, I just picked it up like two weeks ago. And uh, I'm, I was really excited to get it. I've always wanted a, an old school cowboy lever gun, and I finally got one. I was um, kind of in a pinch by the fact of what I <laughs> what I mean is it was between this one and a Henry, and I, I really liked how the Rossi looked. It's just got that old school feel to it, you know. This is the what I said, the RS-92. It's chambered in uh, 38357. So um, uh, I've uh, cycled 38s through it, and it'll cycle perfect. Um, it does have that uh, buckhorn style sight, and then the front sight is like a, a tall like brass bead up front. And um, it does have a safety, so um, when the gun's cocked, right, it's got this little safety right here. You can flick it, red, you're dead, right, and then just flick it back on. So um, yeah, let's let's kind of get into it. I was, I've, like I said, I really wanted a uh, a cowboy gun, and I've always wanted one. You can kind of tell by my past videos that I've uploaded. Well, some recent videos I've uploaded. Um, I got a Heritage 22, and I've got a Ruger Wrangler in 22. And I really, really like you know cowboy guns, single action, old school guns. I definitely like revolvers, and um, this one kind of fit my need for what I was, <laughs> you know, trying <laughs> trying to do. Uh, eventually, I do want to get like a a bigger cowboy gun maybe in like 357 but um yeah this thing's pretty slick and then uh i'm going to talk about some things i've done to it since i've had it um well first thing i want to talk about is this big lever here this big more open one it came with the smaller loop and um kind of some advice here right um i went on ebay because I, I like to shop on ebay and I found these bigger loops for like a, people were trying to sell them for like a hundred bucks. I went to Rossi's website and they sold this bigger loop for forty nine ninety nine. You know, and that didn't include shipping. I think I came out like I think with taxes and everything like around sixty ish bucks for this brand new from Rossi. And um you can't beat that, you know, I, that's just a, a word to the wise, you know, trying to help y'all, trying to save some money. If that's something you want to do in the future, I didn't find this too difficult to uh, remove and replace. I've had this whole gun apart after I got it, and um, it, uh, you know, just because that's how I am. I like to take my guns apart. I like to know how they function, and, you know, if you looked at my past videos, a lot of my firearms are a little bit more modern firearms. This one, while it is, you know, modern in the sense that it was made today, it does have, you know, as far as the internals go, it's still, you know, an 1892 rifle, the way it, it its action works. And uh, I really enjoy this. I really like the classic feel of it. Um... You can't beat it. The action on it is super smooth. Lockup is solid. And, um, yeah, I mean, you really can't beat it. Um, 
So yeah, like I do have the smaller loop, but like I've got bigger hands and I noticed when I was working the action, like, um, it was kind of digging into me. So I went with this bigger one. Now, if you're looking for speed, I know like with the smaller loop, you're going to be able to cycle it faster just because you don't have that gap in here when you're trying to rack it, you know, cycle the action. But uh, I do like this, you know, I'm not out here trying to speed shoot with this thing. I just wanted something to, you know, kind of meet my needs as far as what I would think an old cowboy gun would look like. Um, so I've done that. And then um, what other stuff have I done to it? Oh, yeah. So let's see if I can get it on video. So the, the, the tube, right? Uh, the follower that's in here is a green piece of plastic. And like I said, it'll probably hold up over time. It was just something since I was taking the gun apart and I was, tr I'm trying to, you know, learn how the internals work. I wanted to swap it out to something metal. And I know on like eBay, they got a bunch of brass ones you can buy. Um, I went online and just did a quick Google search and there's a company and I'll probably butcher their name, but I'll put them in the, in the description. It's like Palo Verde. Gunworks, and they do a lot of stuff for these old cowboy guns, and they make a stainless steel follower, exact same size as the plastic one that comes in it, and I put that in. Um, I don't know if we're going to be able to see it. Let's see if I can get it held open here. All right, so down in there, you can kind of see it right there at the bottom. That's just the stainless steel follower right there this piece way down in there and it um you know it's um definitely a piece that I think that is worth uh purchasing because I think I picked it up for like 20 25 bucks I think I think after shipping and everything I came out to like 28 bucks and then um the only other thing I've done to it is I wanted to attach you know sling mounts to it I have a actually unfortunate it's not in the video I have a leather sling coming for it because I wanted something leather for it um, I know they make different ones you know they have them where they wrap around and then they wrap around your stock you know but I kinda wanted something fixed attached so I had a spare um, sling mount for back here uh, I just drilled a hole into the the stock and it allowed me to, to mount this and I ended up putting a, a washer in between this and the stock just to you know maybe prevent it from damaging it um, I'm gonna go to my hardware store and find like a black washer you know so I can match this but uh, that was pretty simple but also a piece of advice when you're going to drill it right this stock is angled so you when you drill it you want to meet the angle you don't want to drill in like this you want to drill in straight down so this sits flush if that's something you want to do oh the rear of the the buttstock is like a metal on there but um yeah i mean it, it's comfortable and then for the front sling through uh rossi um these um I don't know what they call these clamps, like the like uh, the actual name for them, but they sell one with a, a swivel on here. Now, the only bad thing about it, and I didn't know it until after I bought it, is that this one's for the triple black version, the one that's got the polymer forend, the polymer stock. So this one's kind of matte as, as everything else on here is polished. You can see how that's polished, but this one's matte. So... Um, don't know how I feel about that yet, but um, I guess most people probably wouldn't notice it unless I pointed it out. Um, kind of irritates me a little bit, but um, I'm sure that I could probably find one that was in, you know, a polished version later. And I, I bought this from Rossi. Like I said, I got the 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 new. Um, lever from Rossi which was $49.99 from Rossi I think I picked this up for like it was like eight or twelve bucks I bought two of them I bought um, a replacement one in case I broke the old one and then I bought this one and this one's got the swivel mount 
and it's you know it said it was for the triple black i just didn't know that it would be matte black but the other one that doesn't have the sling mount is a polished version so that's just something if you want to think about you know doing um that's just one of the things that i experienced so my plan is to run a swing uh the sling from here back to the stock a leather um sling but um yeah, I mean, excellent gun. There's YouTube videos already on YouTube on how to take this gun apart. It is a little bit more detailed than most of your modern guns, right? And you definitely need a little bit of tools. You're obviously going to need a, a really good flathead to get these screws out. And then you're going to need a punch. And I'm pretty sure... I think it might be this. It's one of these two screws. It's just a cap. Because on the other side... Yep, it's this one. Because on the other side, you have a punch that you, you're you going to need a punch to push a pin out to take this whole thing apart. And then you've got your hammer spring. It goes down in here. And if you've ever taken apart a revolver, you know you're going to need like something. To, there's like a hole in that rod. So when you cock it, you can actually put something small like a pin or... You know, a, a small piece of wire, you know, th you know, uh, thicker wire through that hole to actually hold the tension off your spring. That's one thing you're going to need. But everything else is like a punch and then a really good flathead screwdriver for these. Um, what else? It is, like I said, it is a little bit more detailed as far as like the internals. You know, if you're not used to working on an older gun, which, you know, I wasn't. It probably took me two hours from the time I took it apart to the time I got it reassembled. Um, putting, because I took it apart, cleaned it, and then about, you know, two weeks later, took it apart again just so I could get this lever put in. Uh, it's not difficult, but it is time consuming. I'm sure that once you, if you do this all the time, you obviously you get good at it. Um, it was definitely a good learning experience for me and learning how these guns work and how they function, which I think if you own a firearm, it's something that you should do, you know, at least once with your firearm. Do a complete disassembly if you feel comfortable with it. And like I said, there's plenty of YouTube videos out there to do this. Um, and like I said, it took me about two hours. So that was me. That's including me watching a, a, a 25 minute video in full and then having that video and kind of going back and forth over parts as I was taking it apart. Um, I think I could probably take it apart without a video now. Um, but yeah, um, it's a very solid gun. Um, you can tell that it's got quality to it. It's, it's robust. It's kind of heavy. This one's the 20 inch model and they make it, I don't, they make a shorter barrel model and, um, I'm a bigger guy. So the, the 20 inch one was actually kind of perfect for me. And, um, the capacity on this was 10. So yeah, it holds 10 in this tube and you can shoot 38 or 357. And this is your loading gate right here. So you just push your rounds in and then, um, heard it pretty much it um this I've, I've always wanted one and uh it's um it's just excellent gosh it, it gives me chills looking at it because I've, I've always wanted something like this it's kind of um it's almost like a like a piece of american history even though this one's newer you know this is kind of where like our roots come from with firearms so um I'm going to back the camera up one more time just so you can get a good view of the whole thing. But, um, yeah, it's it's excellent. I love it. And uh, this will be one of those guns, you know, like I pass on to my, my kids, my grandkids. Um, excellent, excellent firearm. I keep saying that, but it gives me chills. And I said that too, but it gives me chills looking at it. I, I'm very fond of this. And kind of almost like the history that these kinds of guns were a part of, you know, but, um, yeah, it's the Rossi R92 and kind of like its competitors are like the, the Henry big boy 357. Um, like this one, it cycles from the top, right? So as it cycles, 
you can see it's it's all from the top. Now I think the Henrys are like a side gate, so like the action's right here on the side as opposed to the top. But and then and the Henry also will allow you to feed from the tube. This one does not. So I know like the Henry has that little cap. You can take it off and load your rounds through the the uh, cutout for the rounds. Uh, this one's like old school side gate loading. Uh, this can be a little difficult uh, if you're not used to shooting lever guns, which I haven't shot one probably since I was a kid. But um, it, uh, you know, it it takes some practice learning how to load this thing and load it fast. And like a, something that I kind of learned from another YouTube video is when you're pushing them in, you don't have to worry about pushing them all the way in. Because the next round that you're loading is going to do that for you. The only one you really got to push in past this gate is the last round. So you can get them loaded in, and then that last round you get it pushed in. But yeah, excellent gun. I promise one day I'm going to be able to get a setup so I can take these firearms to the range and get video of me shooting them. But they, this gun, excellent. Um, the one thing I haven't quite figured out is the, the this buckhorn style sight, like where I need to hold. It is accurate. I don't know if I'm needing to hold in that bottom notch or this, you know, in between these two upper, uh, I guess what they call the buckhorns. But, um, you know, I was only shooting at like 25 yards and it was pretty dang accurate. So, um, still got to do some more shooting with it to figure out, you know, how how and where I need to hold on these sites because this is my first firearm with that style but uh, there's a lot of aftermarket support for it you know for options I know people want to go tactical with them which nothing wrong with that I think they look cool too I just kind of wanted something um, kind of old school you know with wood and you know kind of like representing you know what these guns were um, maybe one day I'll probably get one of those tactical um lever actions but not right now but yeah like i said there's a lot of aftermarket support for these if you want to go that route you can take all this off take your stock off do the skeletonized stock and you know your m-lock foregrip on it um, they have a lot of stuff for this firearm and um it's definitely worth the money you pay for it um what did i pay i think it was like 690 something in my local gun shop that was before taxes, I think, but uh, I don't know what, roughly what they go for. I just know that I wanted one, and when I picked it up, I knew that, you know, I, I held a couple of lever actions, and I knew when I picked it up that this one was it. But, um, yeah, just um, if you have any questions in the comments, um, please, you know, feel free to ask. Um and, you know, there's things that I need to learn about this gun, too. Like I said, it's my first lever, lever gun. So, um, yeah, the Rossi R92. Excellent purchase. Excellent buy. Thank you for watching.